Hello. So welcome to a new series of videos about poetry. And the occasion for these videos is a position, a role that I'll be taking up or that I have, have taken up uh, as of uh, mid-March as poetry book reviewer for Harriet, which is a blog of the Poetry Foundation. I'm very excited for this role. It enables me to review three books, three new books of poetry or poetry in translation every month. And I'm joined by uh, three, two other, three other colleagues. Uh, so we're all going to be reviewing books and hopefully giving new visibility to on heard voices and uh, marginalized traditions uh, on the, in the American and Anglophone poetry world. And one interesting feature of these book reviews that we'll be writing is that they are limited to 300 words. So that's quite a short review, quite a short space that we have to express our enthusiasm for the text that we will have selected for review. And I've been finding, I've written a few of these reviews already. I find them very challenging and very interesting as a form, the, the short book review form. It almost reminds me of writing a poem because in a poem, you know, every single word counts. There can't be anything extra. Everything has to justify its place. And so too with these book reviews, every sentence, every observation has to have a point, has to somehow do help the reader to see something about this text that hasn't been appreciated or that might not otherwise be seen. So I'm just, I've just, as I said, this is my third, I've written three reviews so far and they'll be released in April. So in just a few weeks. Um, and I wanted to take this occasion of recording the first video about these reviews to introduce a review that I've written, uh, about the a new poetry book called The Wild Fox of Yemen by the Yemeni American poet Thraya Al Muntasser. And I'm very excited about this book. It was awarded the Walt Whitman Award from the American Academy of Poets and is going to be published by Grey Wolf Press. And so yeah, so just just to reiterate what these this series of uh, in the upcoming uh, several videos, I will simply be introducing and um, describing the reviews that I've written, reading from them a little bit as well, and a also adding things that I w wasn't able to add when I was in, in the space of the review itself, given the constricted space. So I thought it would be nice to have a video component to my written text. So here's a draft of the review that will be published in a few weeks on the poetry by the Poetry Foundation. And I don't have actually a, a physical copy of this book. It's it's on its way to me. So I've just read an e-version. Um, I'll add a, a cover image so you can see what it looks like. Um, in some cases, I will have the physical book, but in this case, it's I don't have it. Um, so, so the publication of this landmark volume, which won the Walt Whitman Award from the American Academy of Poets, marks a new way of writing poetry in English. Other poets as, such as Somaz Sharif and Arya Aber have experimented with incorporating their native languages into their English poems. Amon Tasser takes this practice to a new level by incorporating the Arabic script into her poems and leaving her Arabic collocations untranslated. So I did think that was one of the most innovative aspects of this book was the, the actual language that the poet creates in English, but really un unapologetically using Arabic and often not translating the Arabic terms. Um, and in many cases, I was able to, I knew, I know enough Arabic to, to follow the meaning, but it was really interesting for me to think about what this type, what this language would look like to someone who wasn't familiar with Arabic. And the fact that it, it is, is, was successful, that, that she is able to successfully to use non-English terms in American English poetry and and have an impact, you know, without translating the terms. I think that says says some, it's a, it, it's a it can be a lesson to those of us who want to engage more with non English languages in our poetry. Uh, and she also does the same with script, as I'll mention in more detail in a second. Um, and so also another thing worth noting is that some of the poems are straight translations from the Yemeni poet Abdullah Al Baradoni. 
who died in 1999. That's is it, perhaps the most famous national poet of Yemen. Um, and so in th those cases where she includes the translation, she also includes the Arabic um, alternating after each verse. And she also um, has poems which she herself says are styled after uh, poets such as Natalie Diaz, Dennis Smith, and Mara Halal. Almond Tasser's poetics celebrates her foreign roots, her commentary on Hayat, um, which means life, and, and it's rendered in the Arabic script. That's that's worth noting that the, the word itself occurs in the Arabic script, um, is central to this aesthetic. And as she says in one of her poems, Hayat in Arabic is to respect the self. This is from the guide to gardening your roots. And then to continue that, that quote, which is to respect my forest, my mountain, my wells. Although Almontasir's poems are suffused by Arabic and Yemeni cultural references, their idiom is unmistakably American. So many of them are set in Yonkers. They include lyrics from hip hop bands like the Fugees. Um, and yet they are also very much at home in Yemen at the same time. One of the poems that I liked the most was called Muslim, is called Muslim with Dog. So what's so interesting to me about this poem is that there is a strong tradition within the Islamic world of considering dogs to be polluted. So typically you wouldn't, a Muslim would not have a dog as a pet in uh, at least traditional Muslim societies because their, their polluted cats are much more popular. Um, and yet this poem is all about the poet's affection for dogs. Um, and so there's one line from the poem that reads, there is another Morta by the fireplace, head on someone's knee as they're stroked. So Morta, of course, means um, Mortad. Uh, it's a term for apostate. So she's calling the dog apostate. And it's very cute because, uh, of course, it's a little bit absurd to to invoke this, this theological um, context for talking about an animal. Um, and it's really about the, 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 the sweetness, the, the, the intimacy with, with animals. And yet the, the, there's a kind of ironization of the Islamic theological tradition going on at the same time. Such, such explications, um, you know, so I think, you know, I feel like as a reader, because my background is, is in Islamic studies to some extent, um, it, I had a, another the poems were particularly interesting and enjoyable for me but but in no way is set a kind of background necessary to appreciate the poems they're just incredibly carefully crafted and beautiful works of of american poetry um even when they're dense so even when their dense and elusive structure remains unexplicated. In other words, when, when the Arabic dimensions or the Yemeni dimensions are maybe not known to the reader, um, they can be just read as poems. That's what I find so interesting is that the poems work on so many different levels. And to quote from the the award that this book received by the poet, uh, the, in the, in the citation of the um, judge, the uh, who is also a poet, uh, Harriet Mullen, these poems, Amut Tasir's poems, ask how to belong to others without losing oneself, how to be faithful to oneself without forsaking others. So I'll end there, and I hope this, this series of video book reviews is uh, opens your eyes in the weeks and months to come to new titles and of poetry and poetry and translation that you might not have known about. Thanks so much for listening and consider subscribing if you'd like to get more of this content. Take care. Goodbye.